today with this masterclass slips catching we've got. Jamie Siddons, one of the assistant coaches from the Australian team, was a beauty in the slips, is going to assist the boys. Heels, Tub, Much, take it away. Thanks, Simon. Well, Australia in the last five years has struggled to replace fellas like Mark Taylor, Mark Waugh, and cement a slips cordon. So, Tubbs, my question to you is, can a slips fielder be made or are they born? Well, I think it's a little bit hard to make a slips fieldsman once he's got to about, say, 17 or 18, I think it's really important as a youngster to start catching early, get your body moving, get your hands working very early and, and use that natural ability that you're, that you're born with. I think once you do that, you can then work on various things throughout your career to become a better slips fieldsman, but you need a bit of natural ability early on, and that's in those formative years, 11, 12, 13, when you're young and you're just trying different things in the backyard. We'll get Jamie to start hitting a few catches off the face of the bat, and you just talk us through, what are the little intricacies that you like about balance and catching in slips? Well, the first thing I think you've got to do as a youngster is get your feet right. You see a lot of young guys these days, they get their feet out here like this. They think, I'll be nice and stable and I'll be able to catch the ball. Now, that might be all right for the one that's nicked straight to you. That's fine. But anything wide of you, you can't move. You're locked into position and all you can do is fall or dive. That's what you don't want. What you want to do is start feet roughly shoulder width apart. And I think you weight in. Knees in, weight slightly on the inside of your feet so you can move to the ball. So when the ball is wide of you, you can turn your body and move with it. And if you can, move your feet. Move your feet so your head goes to where you want the ball to go. So it's over like that and it's not like this. Because that way you've got one chance. If it goes in the middle of hand, you catch it, you're a genius. If it doesn't, it goes down. So once you get that right, then maybe try a few. Bit of practice, and I've got Jamie here just to hit me a few. Get yourself set, try a couple like this. And he's going to test me out early doors too. So I'm just trying to keep the feet in, try and let the ball come to me as well, and try and stay low. It's much easier to come up for a catch that needs to go down. And you stay, you stay low by bending your knees, not just bending your back, it's bending your knees, sitting your backside down. Exactly right. So you try and work, it works the thighs and heels, you'd know all about that as a keeper. You've really got to work on these parts of the body to keep yourself down. The more you come up, that's the one you miss when it goes low. When you're going down for the ball, your hands are going down, hits the hands, goes straight down. You're always better off coming up for the catch. So try to stay low and try to move where the ball's going. As I said, if it goes wide of you, try and turn the body so you go with it like that. Right, there are plenty of great tips to start with. Now, where do we stand? I'm ready to go as a wicket keeper as well, but where do we stand, you and I? We got some overlay and some vision of the Australian team yesterday as to where they're standing in the slips. Well, Take I think us it's through important that. that, firstly, the keeper sets up, sets the standard. Once the keeper's got his spot, there's the first slip there. Now, this is, uh, I think this is the Australians yesterday. You see Shane Warne at first slip there. I think he's in a good position. He's probably a fraction deep. That's all I would say. See them Gilchrist there going across now. He nearly runs into Ricky Ponting at second slip. I think if the first slip was right, around about, I'd say, no more than a metre behind the keeper, the second slip should be slightly in front of uh, the keeper's position, and you'll always go behind him. And then, of course, in the slips, we'll talk about slips a little bit ourselves, but where do you like to position yourself? I guess it varies between off-spinner and leg-spinner. For an off-spin bowler to a right-hander, you've got to be a little bit deeper and, sh and fine. I've always thought my left foot on those tram lines made by the pop increase. For, for a bloke like Shane Warne, who's bowling leg spinners, you want to be a bit wider. So you take your spot there, Hills. All right, we've got Jamie here ready to hit us some nicks. I'm here. The one thing I used to love was having Mark Taylor in my peripheral vision. I'm looking at the, at the ball, but I can still see where he is, so I, I know exactly where I've got to go, and he knows where I am as well. You are standing quite flat compared to Warney, aren't you? Exactly right. I didn't like to get too deep, because I think you've got to make sure you get, the catch comes to you if possible. You don't want it landing short. Right, we're going to have a little catching drill. Whoop. And we've talked about technique of catching, and now there's not only that technique, but there's also some decisions to be made. Am I, as wicket keeper, going to go, go for a catch or am I going to leave it to my first slip partner? Like that, I could have gone for that. Am I going to get there <laughs> or not? Oh, I could have got there as well. <laughs> so the decision-making process is just as important as actually catching the ball. And it's nothing, there's nothing better than a practice than you diving at one, getting it on the end of the gloves and hitting the shins of your first slip fielder. I haven't quite developed one yet in this well, session. Oh. Well, I think that's important. If you get it right, we should be crossing over all the time. If, if Ian's going, he's going to his right, I'm going to my left, we should still be able to get it. He should take it off me. If he leaves it, I should be concentrating on the ball and getting the catch. Now, we saw Adam Gilchrist take a, a great catch this morning off the spinners, and he does lots of this sort of stuff up close to the bat. And Mark, you better get ready and slip. We'll get Jamie to see how we're going. 
Oh, oh still got magnificent it. Magnificent catch. <laughs> so just watching the ball oh, as closely as you can past the bat so that you're practicing good technique. If we are on fire, Tubbs, <laughs> we have still got it. But you're saying statesides around the country should probably look at getting a slips fielder into their young ranks so that when he gets to the top side, Australia have got a ready-made slipper. And I think also as a young person coming up in the game, start practicing your slips fielding early. Get a golf ball, do what Dad, Don Bradman used to do, throw it off a wall and get your feet moving and get your hands moving just like you showed them there. Well, there you go, Simon. Kids, let me tell you that uh, these three, three are the best.